Hello and welcome to Nan Loves Food. I am Anne here today with the best ever garlicky, creamy, delicious, buttery mashed potatoes you have ever had. And I gotta tell you, Instant Pot is gonna make them so easy, so easy. So this is part of the Instant Pot basic series that I've been working on here on this channel. Make sure to click the link in the description for the playlist of those videos. Because around here we like food to be easy and delicious and these definitely fit the bill. So it used to be for me that mashed potatoes were a real pain in the butt to make and a lot of times in restaurants, especially the big corporate ones, mashed potatoes come from a factory. So uh, the process of making mashed potatoes can be very, very tedious. You have to take these ugly things and you have to scrub them and you have to peel them and uh, you have to cook them for a long time and then mash them. And so they're a very, very labor intensive food. And so if you're in restaurants, a lot of times they will just have the factory do those things and ship them in in big pallets, like big plastic bags um, in a big box and the restaurant just heats up the mashed potatoes. So a little insider tip. Uh, so we are used to using pre-made mashed potatoes in professional kitchens. That is not uncommon unless you're at a very, very high-end restaurant or a local restaurant. A lot of corporate restaurants, even ones that you might think wouldn't do that, probably do. So making mashed potatoes is a pain and even those in restaurants know it. But with the Instant Pot, it's actually pretty easy. So a couple of things to know about making mashed potatoes. I really like a Yukon Gold mashed potato and I'll tell you why. Yukon Gold potatoes are golden. I just cut it open and it really has a lovely golden color to it. The thing that makes the potato golden actually kind of helps add to that buttery kind of flavor. So there's just something magical about these potatoes. I also use russets from time to time in my mashed potatoes. Those are fine. Uh, definitely no issues there. I would definitely stay away from things like a red potato for mashed potatoes. Red potatoes are a lot more waxy and so they don't break down in a mash the way you'd want them to. So red potatoes, pretty much for roasting, keep those in that category, but golden or Yukon russets, all those make a great mashed potato, but the, the Yukon gold are my absolute favorites. So that's what we're gonna do today. You have an option when you're making mashed potatoes. You have lots of options, to be honest, when you're making mashed potatoes. Uh, you can either take the skin off or not. I am actually going to do a bit of a hybrid approach today um, for you, mostly because I got Walmart delivery pickup yesterday and they sent me these gnarly, <laughs> gnarly potatoes. Like they're all, they all have these eyes and they're in pretty rough shape. So I'm gonna clean them first. I'm gonna get all the eyes off and I'm gonna chop them up and we're gonna make a big batch of mashed potatoes in the six quart instant pot. So I'm gonna take the whole bag that I got, which I think was a three pound bag, and um, we're just gonna do it all today. And we can freeze those and pull them out for weeknight dinners when we don't feel like making mashed potatoes on those days. I know you're with me. So come along for the ride. So I just spent quite a bit of time washing all of my potatoes. I know a lot of people might have thrown away the potatoes that I just cleaned up, but honestly they're fine so long as you remove the gnarly spots and the eyes off of them. So I just used this scrubber brush. It's uh, by the brand Full Circle. I'll see if I can find that um, on Amazon for you. But this was actually a gift from my sister, but it's really neat because it's a potato scrubber so you can just scrub all the dirt off. But then also if you've got any eyes, you just use this little tool and can just like, you know, twist them out of there. So it works really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these cut up and get the gnarly bits like this scar here, we don't wanna eat that. So anything that's like brown or discolored like that, we'll just cut off and we'll leave the rest of the skin on the potato. All right, so we've got all of our potatoes cut up. I picked too small a bowl. This is real life. That's what happens sometimes. I knew it when I picked it. Normally I would use the insert from the Instant Pot, 
but we are going to saute some garlic. So these are buttery garlic mashed potatoes. So lately I've been buying this, which is freshly peeled garlic in a little baggie. And I will tell you, I think this is the ultimate compromise to the stuff in the jar. So Spice World actually is the one, I mean, they make a jarred garlic, but here's the thing. When you cut into garlic, it releases, I don't know if it's a chemical, it releases a compound. I'm not a scientist, I just eat food. When you release that chemical, that substance that's in the garlic clove, that is what gives you potent garlic flavor. And it happens instantly. That's it, It's that way with onions too, or shallots. Uh, it's, it's actually the breaking of the cell walls inside of here that causes the garlicky, garlicky flavor to be released. So if you've ever had jarred garlic and you've been terribly disappointed by the lack of garlicky flavor <laughs> that you get from your garlic, it's because of that. Because the cell walls were broken a long time ago in a factory, so the potency just isn't there. And that's why most people prefer fresh garlic to the jarred stuff. Jarred stuff is fine in a pinch. I would just rather use garlic powder. Costco sells a really potent garlic powder that's obviously dried garlic. I prefer that to the jarred stuff, but obviously fresh is better any day. So because it's already peeled, that takes away some of the work. And so all you have to do is cut off the little woody nub that we've got there and put it right into a garlic press. And then you're done chopping garlic. Your hands don't even get that stinky, which is amazing. So this stuff, I'm a big fan. And I will let you know, I purchased this bag a couple of days ago. It has a sell-by date of February 26th. So even though this is six ounces of garlic, which is a ton, I've got a month to use it. So to me, this is a really good compromise if you're looking for fresh garlic and you wanna upgrade from the jarred stuff. Highly recommend this route. So we're just gonna grab some of these garlic cloves. We will knob off the ends. We're gonna do a ton of garlic because garlic is delicious. We're gonna do a ton of garlic because my husband is Italian and we like garlic around here. So there we go. And then we will just use the garlic press and press them directly into the Instant Pot. All right, so first things first, we are going to saute our garlic, which means we are going to hit the saute button. Today I'm using a six quart uh, Lux model of the Instant Pot. If you're using any pressure cooker, it pretty much works the same. It might have different buttons. It's on, it hurt us. So now we are sauteing. This one shows that we are on more, which just means high heat, which is what we want to saute our garlic. I'm gonna do a couple of glugs of olive oil, and then we will load up the garlic press and just press directly into the pot. This is generally what happens when you're using a garlic press. Now that our garlic is getting brown, we are just going to dump in the potatoes along with some water and a great big handful of kosher salt. We're gonna put the lid on. We are going to move it to ceiling. So on this model, we're at ceiling, not venting, which is over here and over here. So on this model, we are going to hit cancel and then manual, and we only need six minutes. All right, and we are good to go. Okay, so we are all done. Um, it, I actually got busy and it's been a minute, uh, but we are just going to do a quick release. Okay, you can see the potatoes are definitely done. They are nice and soft. I can just cut them with this spatula, which is amazing. Now, you could drain out some of this water. So depending on how much you've got in there, you might wanna drain some. It looks like there is a little bit more than I would prefer. So I'm actually gonna pick it up and drain some out. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy instant pot silicone holder things and just grab it out. So I just poured some of that water out. You can see that there is still more in there and I think that is great. I think you want some water in there. Uh, you don't want all milk and cream and butter. Maybe you do, <laughs> I don't know. It's always interesting to me when people ask for a recipe for mashed potatoes. I don't even know what to tell them because making a mashed potato is so much based on what's in front of you and what you're going for. There are so many different directions you can go in making a mashed potato. So here we're gonna go with a pretty basic butter and garlic and milk and sour cream version of mashed potatoes. So I'm just going to take my handy dandy old school masher. This is nothing fancy. It's just basically what every grandma had. 
the mashed potatoes with. And we're gonna give these a good mash. And you'll notice as you're doing this, the water starts to become one with the potato mash. And that is what we're going for. I will occasionally use chicken broth instead of water when I'm making my mashed potatoes because it adds more flavor. But because we decided to go with the garlic butter version, I did not, but it certainly wouldn't hurt anything. So I'm just gonna add half a stick of butter so far to start. So when, it, when you talk about making a recipe for mashed potatoes, it's kind of hard because every potato is different and you can't say like five potatoes, right? Because how, how big is five? Five medium potatoes? Okay, what's a medium potato? I think there's just so much variance when you're dealing with natural food like a potato that it doesn't really make sense to have a standard recipe that like will work under any context. Sometimes they're sweeter, sometimes they're not, sometimes they come out creamier, sometimes, I don't know, there are just lots of modifications you can make. Sometimes you're looking for a different texture. So your best way to make mashed potatoes is to notice what you like texturally and go from there. So for me, we're gonna start with a half a half a stick of butter. I've got some um, daisy sour cream here. We're gonna do a big glug of that. I do really prefer the Daisy brand uh, to the other brands. I do generic in a lot of cases, but uh, this is one that I generally go name brand on. We're also gonna pour in some milk. That was probably just under half a cup, maybe a third of a cup of milk. And we're just gonna start stirring. And I would start kind of conservative with your ingredients and go from there. Now remember, we've already got the garlic in there. So that's already given us a lot of flavor. We salted a little bit, but in my experience, potatoes always require more salt than you think they should, even though we're using salted butter and we put salt in to begin with. So we'll definitely taste these so that we can make sure that we're getting exactly the taste, exactly the flavor and the texture we want in these. So they are so easy to mash because we put them in the Instant Pot. It's just so easy. So one tip is you might wanna take your little grabbers here and hold onto the side of the pot because it will turn on you and that makes me crazy. Also remember we have not hit the cancel button yet on our instant pot so this is still in a keep warm mode which is awesome for mashed potatoes because obviously you know your butter wasn't melted when we started. The sour cream needs to get warm. The milk needs to get warm. So even though the potatoes are cooked that's really helping us out. Make sure that you're getting to the very bottom of your pot and getting everything very well incorporated. And honestly, these are looking pretty awesome on the first try, but we'll taste here in a minute. But it's perfectly fine and normal to make adjustments as you go when you're cooking. Taste your food, always get a good idea of where you are and where you wanna be and just keep working until you get there. It doesn't turn out perfect the first time every time. So we have put a little bit of salt and no pepper in there, so I'm gonna assume that it needs both. But I'm just gonna give these a little taste and see where we're at. Those are really good. I do think I want just a couple more knobs of butter, definitely some pepper, and another good, good handful of kosher salt. Now you'll notice these are a little on the lumpy side. I like them to have a little bit of texture to them, which is one of the reasons I like the skin on. But if you take a look at that texture, you can see like there's a whole, there's a whole piece of potato there. And I'm good with that. If you want smoother and creamier mashed potatoes, you keep mashing, that'll go away. And definitely don't keep your skin on if you want super creamy mashed potatoes. At this point, you could add some cheese or like cheddar cheese or cream cheese or anything else you wanna to add to your mashed potatoes. If you wanna go with some funky flavors, uh, I know some restaurants right now are serving wasabi mashed potatoes. I saw that on a menu the other day. You know, this is where you add your flavor in. But honestly, they're delicious, simple. So I'm going to hit the cancel button and scoop myself up a bowl and we will try these. All right, as you can see, I added some butter and some green onions and some pepper to my mashed potatoes, which is how I like them served up. And they look so good. So yeah, let's give those a try. I'm gonna take our leftovers and put them in some quart zip top bags. These are the freezer safe kind. I highly recommend those if you are going to freeze them. And that's exactly what I'll do. I'll label potato on here. I'll put today's, or mashed potato on here. I'll put today's date and I will freeze this much in probably a couple of different zip top bags. Then when the time comes, weeknight dinner 
is here. I will just pull that back out of the oven and that will be that. It'll be super easy and we'll have a side for dinner that I don't have to do any work, but I get a ton of return on my time because I have probably four sides worth of dinner. I probably have four nights worth of side dishes in that one giant pot of mashed potatoes for the two of us. So certainly if you have a bigger family, use the gallon bags, uh, the big guys and freeze one portion or two portions. If you're single, get the littler, <laughs> littler bags and freeze them. There is no reason that you have to eat bad food when you can just make a bunch at one time. Whether I made enough for one serving or I made enough servings for 10, it takes about the same amount of time. The only difference is how many potatoes you're dicing. So keep that in mind. Anytime you can make a bunch and freeze, I'm a huge fan of that because that makes weeknight dinners so easy. So if you like this video, please like it and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you as part of our YouTube family. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you later. Bye.